Today, I'll be talking about a product that might be a bit unusual for the channel, but stay with me, I promise it will be worth your time. It's a hardware DPN or DVPN, which stands for Decentralized VPN. When I first learned about it, I was unsure, which is exactly why I decided to take a look at it myself and share my thoughts on it. This is the Deeper Connect Air by Deeper Networks. Deeper Networks sent me this device and sponsored this video, but all the thoughts I'll be expressing are entirely mine. You can find a link to the device in the description below. Before talking about the Deeper Connect Air, let's first understand what a DPN is and what the point of it really is. A DPN or a DVPN is the acronym for Decentralized Virtual Private Network, which means it's a decentralized VPN, obviously. At the core of its utility, a virtual private network, also a VPN, allows you to have a secure and encrypted connection over the internet between your device, such as a computer, smartphone, and tablet, towards a server. This connection allows you to access the internet as if you were connected to a private network, even though you may be using a public or unsecured network. Essentially, it encrypts your data and masks your original IP address. So, just like a VPN, a DVPN encrypts your data, masks your IP address, and allows you to access the internet anonymously. However, the decentralized VPN service removes the dependency on your proprietary VPN servers, many of which you're already familiar with. You see, historically, VPN providers lie, and it's virtually impossible to verify a VPN provider's claim of zero login. And guess what? The VPN companies know this, and that's exactly why they keep lying. On the news, there have been several cases where the VPN provider boasts a no login policy, but actually it turns out that they're logging, especially when the feds come knocking. So what exactly makes the DPN or DVPN different? I would just call it a DPN. Well, it's decentralized. No one really owns the network on which the device runs. Let me explain. With a device like the Deeper Connect Air, you have a peer-to-peer -peer connection, which means that this device will connect to another one like itself, completely leaving out the centralized third-party servers. So every individual who owns a Deeper Connect Air acts as an exit node to the internet anywhere in the world that they are. And that is exactly what makes it decentralized. Basically, with the Deeper Connect Air, I can act as a node for anyone who wants to access the internet within the United States. It's basically a hardware device and a one-time purchase, which means no subscription in comparison to a traditional VPN. All right, I know what you're thinking and I know how it sounds and I will address what you're thinking about later on in the video. Trust me, I know what you're thinking. Now that we have a basic understanding of what a DPN is, let's take a first look at the Deeper Connect Air. The device comes in a very nice and compact package and just looking at it, you can tell it's pretty portable and light. When we open it, we have a very minimal packaging, the setup guide, the device, and the USB adapter for USB-C to USB-A. It also has a dual antenna for maximum data transmission and usage for multiple devices. The device itself, like I mentioned earlier, is super portable and here's what it looks like in comparison to my AirPods case. Here's also what it looks like in comparison to my iPhone 12 Pro. This device will easily fit in your pocket, making it super convenient to carry anywhere you're going without it looking weird or bulky. Now that we know what the device looks like, let's take a look at actually setting it up. There are multiple ways by which you can set up the deeper connect air. The first way I'll be trying will be using the Wi-Fi dongle mode. Basically, this involves connecting the device to a laptop or a PC, a Mac in my case, and requires no driver installation. As you can see, all I had to do was allow the accessory to connect to my MacBook Air. This will be the same process whether you're using a Windows, Mac OS, or Linux operating system. Then, let's go ahead and set it up. In order to avoid any potential network connection conflicts, we'll start by disabling the current wireless network on my MacBook. Then, we'll navigate to the IP address of 34.34.34.34 in order to access the Atmos OS system which this device runs on. Next, we'll log in with the default credentials. Next, we'll do a scan in order to find our target Wi-Fi network and then connect to it. And there you have it. The installation is mostly complete but you're only just getting started. By the way, I opened up the terms and conditions for some light reading later on. I'll let you guys know what I find it there. Here's the admin panel where you're able to set up how you want to use this device. From the dashboard, you have some high level information of this device, including connections, memory, and CPU usage, and various other things. You can also see various nodes within various geographical locations that you can connect to. Next, within the DPN functionality, which is basically the bread and butter of this device, you can select between the smart route, full route, or completely disable this functionality. If you desire to not have your device shared, then you'll probably be doing that. Even though that completely de defeats the point of the DPN, there's still a lot of other features that this device has. Here's the tunnel interface. 
It shows you the available nodes and gives you the ability to create, delete, switch, and refresh tunnel nodes. To learn more about how to use this feature or any other feature, you can find the Deeper Connect knowledge base in the description, or you can comment down below and let me know if you'd like me to make a complete tutorial on setting up this device. There are various other DPN settings for routing, which allows you to configure things that could improve or enhance your internet experience with this device. There's also this really cool app relocator page, which is basically a curated list of apps they can use the DPN to access, but it's conveniently placed for you in this page. You can actually set this up such that every time you access, say, Netflix, it only goes to Netflix in Canada, for example. I thought this was pretty neat. There's also the ad blocking feature using DNS ad filters or HTTP ad filters. There's also the parental control if you have kids or for yourself. There's also the security section, which allows you to have customized DNS or customized HTTPS rules. And you definitely want to check out the knowledge base if you're going to be doing this one. There's also a mining option, but I won't be going too deep into that in this video, but maybe in a tutorial video. Next, there are settings for Wi-Fi, sharing, and a bunch of other things. And finally, there are the device settings, which basically shows all the information about the hardware, the system version, the feature library, the network, the network sessions, and upgrade information for the device. The traffic page and the log page shows you the details about connections relating to your DPN tunnels. After this setup, I also decided to try this device as a wireless relay, which basically allows it to become an intermediary between my Wi-Fi access point and all the devices within my home network. And the setup process was just as seamless as the first one. I will link that setup guide in the description as well. I also recommend changing your default password and you can find the setting in the settings tab under administration. Now, remember I said I know what you were thinking about earlier in the video? Yeah, I know what you're thinking about. With this decentralization, you are basically acting as a node and the network activity from the person on the other end of the world is coming from you. So this could either mean the FBI knocking on your door or maybe your IP getting banned, which is why it's important to take some time to configure this device properly and define conditions for what other people can do from your node as an exit node. It's always good to have it at the back of your mind that privacy comes at a cost and it's not convenient, but it could be subsidized with a device like this. I think this is a good device for people who are interested in more privacy and more decentralization of the internet. It's also really cool to see more evolution in the decentralization of things overall. And I think this project is onto something really big in the future. Let me know in the comment section if you'd actually use this device. And if you're sold on it, click the link in the description to get yourself one and try it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.